Hello everyone, this is Joy Nelson, and I want to welcome you to my Stamp with Joy Cards and Crafting with Joy Nelson YouTube channel. We are going to be making this card featuring designer series paper and a technique you, you might not know, which is an easy way to do a watercolor background. I'm going to be using the Jar of Flowers stamp set and the Coordinating Punch. It may not be in the way that you think I'm going to use it, so stay tuned. I'm also using, for my greeting, I am using the Well Said stamp set um, fe featuring the Know That Love, Prayers, and Caring surround you today. This is an A2 size card, which is what we use here um, in the United States. It um, may not be the same size as what you're using, but hopefully you can, um, you know, modify your layers based on your card that you use in your country. First off, you're going to need a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Mine is one and three fourths inches by five inches, or 4.4 centimeters by 2.7 centimeters. And we are going to take an acrylic block and Stampin' Write Markers, Flirty Flamingo, and Mango Melody. I'm going to move this stuff aside so I can put some scratch paper down because this is going to be a wet technique. First, I'm going to color with the Mango Melody about two-thirds of my block. I am using the flat side of the brush tip. You want to be careful not to go straight down because you will uh, damage the tip of your marker. The Stampin' Write markers are water-based, so they are great for a watercolor type technique. And I am not using watercolor paper for this technique because Whisper White does work great for this technique. Now I'm going to come in on the opposite end and use the Flirty Flamingo marker, again making sure that you use the flat of the brush tip and make sure you get good coverage with the marker. And I'm going to overlap a little bit into my Mango Melody so that the colors blend together. Now I want to come out and make sure that my 30 Flamingo starts running pink again and not orange. Set those aside. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to take a Stampin' Spritzer. They come two in a package and I'm going to hold it above my block about 10 inches or so and give that a good spritz. I'm going to take my piece of Whisper White cardstock. Oh, I want to go the other direction. Lay that down. Lay the block on top. And let the colors run together. And you can see the ink is absorbing into the paper. So you want to let that set a little bit so that it absorbs fully into that piece of Whisper White cardstock. Oh, that is beautiful. So you're going to set that aside. I like to let mine air dry, but if you were in a hurry, you could probably use your heat tool to speed up the process. I have one that I have already made and let dry. So I am going to come in with the 
one of the flower images from the jar of flower stamp set and my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. If I've got a stamp on a large block like this, I like to bring my ink to my stamp, go over it a couple times to make sure I get good coverage. So I'm going to start at the bottom going off of my watercolored piece of paper a little bit. So we're going to do that three times. Let's bring my sample back in. Stamp number two. I'm stamping them close together but try not to overlap and just kind of walking the stamp a little bit pulling straight up so I don't rock it again tap 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 this is our final stamp for this image Now I'm going to be using this image again on the inside of my card. So I want to make sure that this is cleaned off. I'm taking my Stampin' Chamois. I have cut my chamois in half. So this is only half of a chamois. And you'll see it gets, it gets nice and used. It will stain a little bit. But you rinse that ink right out. Maybe use a little mild soap and water. And the ink will come out, even if it's stained, it still cleans it really well, as you can see. I'm going to bring in a piece of Just Jade um, Designer Series paper. This is from the Flowers for Every Season Designer Series paper. This comes in a pack of 6x6 six six size Designer Series paper. It is double-sided. So you can see that's a really beautiful pattern as well, but um, I didn't think that that would work too well with my um, stamped image with my technique, so I went with the more solid image. This piece is 2 inches by 5 inches, or 5.1 centimeters by 2.7 centimeters. Again, you may need to adjust the size a little bit based on your card base. So I want to flip those over and bring in some invisible tape because we are going to put those pieces, butt them right up against each other, not overlapping, and tape them together. Oops, that is a loud noise. One last piece. Now we need to bring in some ribbon. So I am using two of the ribbons from the Flowers for Every Season ribbon pack. It does also have some very pretty uh, misty moonlight and silver twine that is also in this pack. So it's got white, it's got the Just Jade Gingham, and the Misty Moonlight Twine. So I need a piece to cover up that seam. And I'm going to make it a little bit longer than the piece it's going to be covering. so that I can overlap it on the back, come over that seam, and to be overlapping the Just Jade piece of the Designer Series paper. I'm going to use my Stampin' Seal. To attach it to the back.
and then I'm going to bring in a piece of basic black, a layer of basic black. My layer is four inches by five and a quarter inches or 10.2 centimeters by 13.4 centimeters. Flip that back over, use the stamp and seal again. This is the new um, tape runner permanent adhesive that Stampin' Up! has. The stamp and seal is great for cards. We also have stamp and seal plus, which is has a um, stronger adhesive and is really great for. Oh, I put those on the other side. Well, you're going to see what it looks like to have the sentiment on the going the other direction on this card. Yep, we, were, we are going to try it. All right. So that piece will then attach to my card base. Again, this is an A2 size card base, which um, is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and then scored and it will be folded at four and a quarter inches. The um, centimeters for that is 14 centimeters by 21.6 centimeters and folded at 10.8 centimeters. And this is the Whisper White Thick cardstock, which is um, a better choice if you're using the Whisper White for a card base rather than the um, regular Whisper White, which is not quite as thick and doesn't hold up as a card base quite as well. Use my bone folder to make that a nice crease. And we're going to attach that to the front of my card base. Make sure you've got a nice, even layer there. Now, while I've got it here, I'm going to work on the inside a little bit. Here's the same flower image that I cleaned off with my stamp and chamois. And we're going to bring the markers back in. And we're going to use the, um, the direct to um, stamp technique with the markers. So again, use the flat side of the markers so that you don't ruin your tips. Make sure you cover that with ink. Come in and do the flirty flamingo on the other half. This is a great technique to use if you just want to color images a certain color and not have the image be all one color. You can have the image be different colors. So I'm going to stamp this in the corner on the inside of my card because it's always great to have something of interest on the inside of your card as well as on the outside. Oh, isn't that pretty? I'm also going to take the Just Jade Gingham Ribbon. I like to put a strip of ribbon in my cards sometimes. Oh. I guess I didn't need quite that much, but I, I'm cutting it a little bit longer on purpose. Now I'm going to take, so that way I have a place to hold my finger. I'm going to take the stamp and seal again and run it down the length of this ribbon. And this will go on the edge on the inside of my card. So I don't know how many of you have thought about putting ribbon on the inside of your card as well as the outside. 
I think it gives it a very pretty touch. Let's trim that with the paper snips. Brush those out of the way. So now the inside of our card is decorated. We can be, continue working on the outside. For a lot of my um, greeting stamps, especially if they're very um, small type like this, it um, is hard sometimes to get the image completely inked the way you want it to the first time. So I like to use my Stamparatus which is wonderful for this technique. But I re just remembered I need to punch my strip. Of cardstock, another piece of Whisper White at one inch by four and a quarter inches or two and a half centimeters by 10.8 centimeters. And you're going to wonder how I'm going to do this because I'm not going to punch out a, out a jar. I'm going to use this punch to create a corner rounded technique. So, I, the, our punches are great. They lock for nice, easy, concise storage. And then you unlock them. Turn them upside down so you can see through the window. So, this piece I'm going to slide in and there's there's two plates in there when you look inside there's two plates and to know if you've got it in the right spot your your paper will start coming out the other side and if it starts coming out the other side you know you've got it in the right spot if it doesn't come out the other side you don't have it in the right slot that's one way to know and then I'm going to turn it I'm going to put it right up along that edge and I'm going to punch and then put it back in again to make sure it's in the right spot. It's coming out that end. So you've got a piece that's the piece that punched off. So now this one, I just want to get this corner. So I'm going to bring it around the other side and I'm not going to go into the punch, so I'm not going to cut any more off of the end. It's going to be just catching that corner when I punch. There we go. See how that made a nice rounded? That's another way to use this punch. It just did that little bit off of there for the second punch. Close that punch up. Now I'm ready to use my Stamparatus. I love the grid paper that is sized to fit the Stamparatus because I like to come and I like to mark where I'm going to put my paper. I'm going to come back in with my Memento Tuxedo Black. I'm going to ink that up. And give it a little press and take a look. Well, it is inked more on this side than this side of my stamp. So I am going to ink that up again, trying to catch just that half. Stamp it again and just give it a little press just on that side. See if I can get those words to come out a little more evenly. Oh, that's better. Put the Stamparatus away for now. And I am going to bring in a strip of the basic black to do a border around this piece. My piece is one and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches, or 3.2 centimeters by 10.8 centimeters. 
bring this punch back in again with it, with it upside down so the window is showing. Turn it the direction that works best for me being right-handed. Now this one, I, it's sized so it just fits just inside of this window. So now all I have to do is give it a punch. So as you can see, this is going to layer on top of this with just a little border around it. So now I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to cut this piece using my trimmer. I'm going to cut this piece to two and a half inches, which is about 6.3 centimeters. And I'm going to cut this piece to two and a quarter inches, which is about 5.7 centimeters. So I'm going to attach these two pieces together with just a little border around. I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. Three of them should work good. I love Stampin' Dimensionals. I love popping things up just to give them a little more depth. Peel those pieces off. And I can't turn it around the, on the, the green again, but this one is going to, the green is going to be on the watercolored piece this time. Put that on there at about, where the top of is at about halfway up your card, approximately. Now, I also took that white ribbon and I pre-tied a bow so that you don't have to watch me tying a bow. And I'm going to take a glue dot and take my bow to the glue dot, give it a nice firm press, lift it up, and now the glue dot is on the back of my bow. So I'm going to put that just right on top of the ribbon that we put to cover up the seam between our two papers. Now all it needs is just a little extra embellishment. I'm going to use the Jules Basic Rhinestones. And the You Pick tool. I'm using the spatula end of the You Pick tool. And I'm going to give it just a little extra pop with rhinestones. So we're going to put one right here. And that was the smallest. I'm going to use a medium one and put the medium one oh, approximately right here. And another smallest one just kind of above it to the side. So there we go. Hey, you know, I might actually like that better because you can see my rhinestones better. So hey, that, that is what you would call a happy accident. I really hope that you enjoyed my project and maybe even learned something new. Please be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. And I also want to tell you that for this video, I am taking part in a global Stampin' Up! vlog hop. So be sure to click on the link in the description to this video to hop to the next person so that you can watch another great project. If you wish to place an order, please be sure to contact your regular demonstrator. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please use the Find a Demonstrator to locate one in your area. Again, I hope you enjoyed my video. This is Joy Nelson, 
and my channel is Stamp with Joy Cards and Crafting with Joy Nelson. Have a good day. Bye.